it's a rather dismal October evening, so I'm going to try and brighten things up a little bit by playing Thrash Rally on the Neo Geo. So let's take a look at the fact file for this game. Thrash Rally was released in 1991 in the USA and Japan, published by SNK and developed by Alpha Denshi Corporation. And the price I paid was £15.50, although my copy, although box, does not have any instructions. The current going rate on eBay goes from about £75 and upwards. Depends on which version you're looking for. The Japanese version is generally a little bit cheaper. The US version, fully boxed and complete, can cost you anything up to about 150 quid. And there's even a brand new sealed copy on there for about £500 if you really want to waste some money. So let's take a look at the game packaging and then we'll have a look at the game of course. So this will just be a look at the outside packaging of the box because I don't have the instructions for this game but first let's just take a look at the cartridge uh, which is pretty normal Neo Geo cartridge except for this little port in the top of it the jack for multi-link play. I think there's only two Neo Geo games that had this and basically if you could find another person with a Neo Geo AES or possibly even an MVS you could plug that using a 3.5mm jack, I think, into another copy of the game and play head-to-head. -head. Never found anyone who's got that hardware, so uh, I'm never going to have the chance to do that, I imagine. Uh, so here's the box, which, as you can see, has got some pretty terrible artwork on. I assume these are representations of famous rally drivers of the time. I've got no idea, don't know much about rally driving. There's some cars on the front there as well, and the logo there, Thrash Rally. And the spine, yep says thrash rally on it and the back cover has got some blurb on it of course and some screenshots so the screenshots there's a bit of desert there there's a bit of water there and a bridge over a garden who knows and the blurb says the ultimate challenge for the best pro drivers thrash rally and then there's lots of uh, typos or English in here the World Rally Championship and Paris Dakar Rally are replayed realistically based on the updated racing data. Tracks of danger and beauty. Skid on by the world's best drivers with your power drift and slide skills. Can you squeal past the finish line? Squeal spelled incorrectly there. And then there's some instructions of how to use the controller and a bit of copyright bump at the bottom there that we don't really care about. So here we have the title screen with some background music, pretty basic sort of title screen there. It doesn't stay on there for long before it goes into a game demo, which as you can see is an overhead view racing game. Kind of reminiscent to Micro Machines. Uh, so without further ado, let's get on with the game. Uh, so the only option is what uh, difficulty level you choose. Uh, I'll stick with normal. You then got a game mode to choose from. You can either have the World Championship, which is what I'm going to play first, or the Paris Dakar Rally, um, which is a, a, an ongoing race um, from Paris to Dakar, roughly, although it doesn't really look like it from that map. So let's have a look at the World Championship. So it tells you how to play, as do all Neo Geo games. Pretty straightforward. It's left and right to steer, A to accelerate and B to brake. I think we can skip that. Not quite sure what that's saying, something in Japanese. I should have mentioned I've got Japanese Neo Geo, so although I'm playing the US version of the game, uh, various ports will be in Japanese. So you can, uh, first of all, put your name in. And then you get to choose a car, and there's six different cars to choose from, which as you can see, are not very uh, cunningly disguised names of real cars. So you've got the Citroen ZX, the Mitsubishi, the Porsche 911, the Nissan GTI and so on, which is now what I've been chosen. And straight away we go on to the first race, which is starts in Monte Carlo, in the snow. And basically it's just a race, it's a timed race, uh, there's various checkpoints to reach, cars to try and get past, or drive over in that case. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff in terms of how the game is played. You get hints as to where the course, the track's going, uh, when it's going around a tight bend. And it's uh, usually three or four stages to each race. Uh, as you can see, it suddenly went from snow to desert there, which is a little bit unusual.
and the uh, control is pretty easy as I said there's no uh, gears or anything like that you basically just accelerate slow down around the bends very rarely use the brakes at all in fact and just to uh, try and get around the stages the, the uh, legs of each stage uh, to complete the stage there I was back in the desert and then back in the snow some nice little effects like birds flying over at times you'll see other things flying over like planes and helicopters as well as we progress through the game graphics are pretty simplistic really um, definitely not pushing the Neo Geo to its limits and there we go that's the first stage completed fairly easily with six seconds to spare so then you get the uh, ranking which I finished uh, fifth overall it seems and then the overall ranking for the race which I've got eight points and I'll move to the next stage which has gone all the way to Kenya for some reason and in Kenya you'll see some interesting things on the road there's some birds flying over there but what you're about to see is a bit of wildlife on the roads uh, those are, I don't know what those are, wildebeest maybe later on there's also elephants on the road uh, you get the narrowing of the lanes on this stage and uh, more sort of obstacles, there's the elephants more sort of obstacles to avoid oops and you have to basically race each race almost perfectly oh yeah you also go through water on this stage somewhat unbelievably uh, any time where you slow down you're basically running the risk of not qualifying uh, at the end of the stage because the time limits are very tight so the less things you hit the better so overall the graphics are quite nice and colourful the cars are reasonably nicely animated although nothing very exciting going on there oops Ooh, that might have actually help me I didn't know you could go around that ramp there well, that might have actually given me a speed advantage oops oh I've hit something that moved at me yeah, it's looking unlikely I'm going to make it to the end of this stage as I mentioned the time scales are very tight and yet yeah, time's up just as I approach the home straight there uh, luckily you get the opportunity to continue which I will do you don't have to go back to the beginning you just go back to the start of the stage you've just been on so I'll give it another go and there we go that's the stage completed that time around a little bit of time to spare as well and uh, I think I finished last that time around so I've got 14 points of iron next we move to the Acropolis in Greece and it's more of the same slightly different backgrounds slightly different music sounds and music are pretty reasonable again nothing to write home about it's far from the most uh, awe inspiring Neo Geo game I imagine obviously all Neo Geo games are rather expensive but I imagine this one was one of the cheaper ones uh, because the meg count on the uh, cartridge is not particularly high and again this is another level where you've got to do it virtually perfectly to have any chance of qualifying for the next stage something a bit weird going on with my uh, AV connection at the moment as well the graphics are kind of switching from bright red to a more browny sort of colour which is quite annoying dodgy AV connection so I apologise for that not much I can do about it in mid game however that corner always gets me, it's a real tight corner so the final stage I've got 13 seconds I think it's very unlikely I'm going to make it especially when that happens And sure enough, I've not managed to qualify for the next stage, but I've got another continue, so let's give it another go. So I'm getting close to the end of the stage, I might just make it this time. Oh no! 
What a disaster. So close that time. One more life to go. One more continue to go to be more precise. Gonna be pretty close again if I do make it. Oh, I think I've just blown it again. Yeah, so that's my final credit gone. And you see the game over screen. But what you can now do if you've got a memory card, which I have, is save. Uh, which then, when you restart the game, should. No, it's not worked. Oh, it has worked. Yes, it has worked. Sorry. I forgot about going through all that. So basically I get to restart on the Acropolis stage again. So I'll give it one more shot. It's all about getting a perfect racing line on this stage and probably the subsequent ones as well. Any crashes into the side, which I've already managed to do, is probably going to mean that you don't make it through the stage. Yeah, this is going to be a disaster. Getting a good line through these zigzags is kind of crucial, uh, and I'm. This is. I may as well just give up on this go straight away because uh, I'm not going to make it. Although, having said that, I've got a couple more seconds left than usual, so as long as I don't do anything stupid like that, there's a chance I might make it. I'm not too hopeful. Oh, made it with 0.6 of a second left. Amazing. So we get to see the next stage now at least. I'm uh, comfortably in 5th place, not getting any higher and probably not dropping any lower either. So the next stage is in Finland, the Thousand Lakes uh, and this involves a lot of bridges. Oops, that's not a good start. Lots of bridges over lakes, again lots of wildlife uh, around, some of which forms obstacles, some of which doesn't. A lot of ramps in this as well. I'm not sure that there's many rally races in the real world that have so many ramps that you fly over. Quite like these ones at least. Lots of hay bales on this stage as well for you to crash into. Be lucky to even make it to the next stage of the race here. Just made it through. So I'm probably not going to make it through this stage, I'm not going to play any further on. Uh, there is a fifth stage after which you do uh, complete the race. I might just make it through to the final stage here, but I don't think I've got enough time left to get through to the next stage. So it's a fairly challenging, very challenging, I would imagine if you play on the higher difficulty level, fairly challenging uh, stage-based racing game. That's half of it at least. So there you go, that's enough of that. Just skip through the continue. Uh, no, I don't want to save it this time. Go back to the main menu. Get there eventually. And this time I'm going to play the Dakar to Paris, as it says there, more commonly known as the Paris to Dakar rally, um, which starts off in. Not Paris, I don't, I believe. Oh, first of all, I've got to do all this stuff again, sorry. And you get more vehicles to choose from here as well. You can choose from the six cars. There's also an off-road bike, an off-road buggy, or even a truck. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the sand buggy, which seems to be pretty evenly rated on all the sort of brakes and speed and all that kind of stuff. So let's go with this. So yeah, you start off in Africa, I think, which is not where the Paris to Dakar rally would start in my year 
understanding, but there we go. So this one's different. It's basically just six consecutive stages. If you fail at any point, uh, then when you continue, you go right back to the beginning. It's just get as far as you can. And uh, the driving is exactly the same. The, the overall design of the game is exactly the same. It's just a slightly different challenge. Any sort of mistakes are punished pretty mercilessly in this one. Uh, and I've already made a couple. So I'll probably just have the one go through this, depending on how far I get. Different music on this level, I think, than the other game, the other uh, game mode. All pretty generic, arcadey stuff. Uh, nothing too spectacular about the game, but it is fun. It's challenging. Um, it's you get the feeling that whenever you do uh, lose a, a round or a, a leg of a heat, that um, it is probably your own fault. Oh, just made it into the next stage. So um, it does give you the sort of inclination to have another go. I think we'll be coming up on some wildlife in this section. This one looks like it's in Egypt or somewhere. There's a lot of uh, winding round sandy streets. Some very unusual curves as well. And I've made it onto the next stage amazingly. I'm not doing too badly at all here. So I'm just going to crash into one of these elephants on this stage, just to show you that they are elephants. Look how upset they get. Yeah, this is going to mean, of course, I'm not going to get any further in the game having done that. But uh, to get to stage four out of six on the first attempt, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so the, the clock's ticking away. There's not much more to say about the game. It's fun. Uh, it's worth the 15 quid that I paid for it, but I wouldn't want to be paying 75 pounds for this game on the Neo Geo. If you've got a Neo Geo MVS or a Neo Geo CD, you can get it on those platforms as well. A hell of a lot cheaper than this, and uh, it might be worth trying out. I would like to try that link up mode at some point in the future, but I need to find someone who's got a copy of the game and the hardware as well, of course. So it's probably never going to happen. But overall, not a bad game, and I will be keeping it, of course, because relatively speaking, it's a cheap Neo Geo game. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Two, one, zero.